Let's take it back a notch and let's talk about the state of matter. Chances are the majority of you learned about the three states of matter. Solid, liquid, and gas. These occur in everyday life. This table is solid, this drink is liquid, and the air around me is gas. There's a fourth common one as well, but we'll get to that in a minute. To know how the states of matter work, we have to know how temperature works. All atoms vibrate around some amount. Temperature is a measure of how much they are vibrating. The more you heat up atoms, the more they vibrate. I'll put the fancy definition up here on the screen if you want it for whatever reason. This vibration becomes very important to how things interact with each other. Let's start with the most common compound you see around you in your everyday life. Water. There's two hydrogens, two oxygens, and kind of looks like Mickey Mouse. If you look very closely at its solid form, ice, you can see that it has a crystalline structure. All types of compounds have a way of doing this, but how they do it is kind of hard to explain. Essentially, all the atoms in the solid are attracted to each other. The vibration in this ice isn't enough to overpower this attraction. In a liquid, such as what this ice cube is rapidly becoming, the vibration overpowers this attraction and the atoms slide over each other, creating what we know as liquids. This effect is exacerbated when you heat it even more. Let's visit my kitchen. See here, we have water that is boiling. Now in this boiling water, the water molecules are getting so hot that they actually start vibrating enough so they just go away from all the other water molecules and come off as steam. And the reason these plumes of steam don't stick together is because all the water molecules have their own way that they want to go because of their heat, and they don't stick together, unlike water or uh, ice. Now, it is really hot in here, and I would like to get out. Huh, <sighs> much better. Now let's go back to the fourth state of matter. This one, in my opinion, is one of the coolest, despite being one of the hottest. Plasma. Chances are, if you look around, you will find a fluorescent light. You turn one on, and the gases inside that light ionize into plasma. This plasma can carry electricity from one side of the tube to the other, creating light. There's another example, but I have to go outside for that one. Despite it being something on the order of 30 degrees outside, you can still see some semblance of the sun. And the sun is really one of the biggest examples of plasma that you see in our everyday lives. Uh, it's just so hot, it basically has no choice but to be plasma. And the fact that it is plasma give, makes it have all those electrical storms that cause all the problems with radio and transmission lines, and really anything in our everyday lives that runs on electricity. Now that sun is not exactly doing a very good job of keeping me warm, so I shall go back inside. There's a whole host of other ones that occur very close to absolute zero, which is negative 459 degrees Fahrenheit. However, don't worry about them as you won't encounter them in your day-to-day -day life. I hope you all learned something, and I hope you enjoyed this new video format. Thank you for watching.